In question one, we've got the point uh, P with coordinates negative two, negative five, and we have to consider where these will be mapped under each of these transformations. Well, the first one y is f of x plus two. The plus two here simply means that we are adding two to y, and therefore the point will now be found at negative two, comma negative three. In B, we've got the modulus of f of x. When we've got the modulus of f of x, it means that any part that lies below the x-axis, it's now reflected so that it appears above the x-axis. And essentially, we're making the y-coordinates positive. And therefore, the point has coordinates negative 2, 5. And finally, in C, 3f of x minus 2 plus 2. The minus 2 in the bracket means that we are moving 2 units to the right. We are multiplying y by 3 and then adding 2 to y. And therefore, this means that the point now has coordinates 0, comma, negative 13. So in 2, we've got f of x here. And we are told that x plus 2 is a factor of f of x. We need to find the value of k. Well, we know that if x plus 2 is a factor, this means that f of negative 2 should be 0, and therefore I will be substituting x with a value of negative 2. This gives me minus 2 minus 4 in brackets, and then minus 2 squared minus 3 times negative 2 plus k, close brackets, minus 42. This simplifies to minus 6 brackets, 4 plus 6, plus k, close brackets, minus 42, which further simplifies to minus 6 times 10 plus k, minus 42, and therefore we have minus 60, minus 6k, minus 42, which is minus 102, minus 6k, and this should be 0. Therefore, minus 102 is 6k, which means that k is minus 17. In question three, we've got the circle here and we need to find the coordinates of the center as well as the radius. Well, we'll start by putting the equation in the standard form that would allow me to see the center and the radius. So we've got x squared minus 10x plus y squared plus 16y is equal to 80. So we complete the square, we get x minus 5 squared minus 5 squared plus y plus 8 squared minus 8 squared is equal to 80. So x minus 5 squared plus y plus 8 squared minus 89 is equal to 80. So this leads to x minus 5 squared plus y plus 8 squared is equal to 169. And therefore the center has coordinates 5 comma negative 8 and the radius is simply the square root of 169 which is 13. In B we have that P is a point on the circle furthest away from the origin O and we need to find the exact length OP. It makes sense to draw a quick sketch to see what's happening. So there it is we've got the circle it's centered at 5 comma negative 8 so for p to be the point so it's furthest from the origin it means it has to be here at the very end so p is there so the distance from the origin up to p is going to be certainly the distance from the center to p which is the radius which is 13 plus the distance from the origin to the center which is 5 squared plus negative 8 squared square root. This is a root of 89, and therefore the exact length of OP is 13 plus root of 89. In 4, we have to express this limit as an integral. Well, we know that integration is a process of infinite summation, and because we are allowing delta x to go to zero, it means we are adding up infinitely many fine strips of width delta x, and therefore this is just integration, it's the area under the curve. So this is simply the integral of 2 over x dx from 2.1 up to 6.3. And then in part b, we need to move on and evaluate this integral, giving our answer in the form ln k. So 
the integral of 2 over x is 2 ln x and we've got the lower limit of 2.1 and the upper limit of 6.3 so substituting the upper limit gives us 2 ln of 6.3 minus 2 ln of 2.1 i will factor out the 2 so 2 brackets ln of 6.3 minus ln of 2.1 and i can now combine the two logarithms together into 2 ln of 6.3 over 2.1 which is 2 ln 3 this is ln of 3 squared which is ln of 9 and therefore the constant k is 9 in question 5 we've got the height h meters of a tree t years after being planted model through this equation here a and b are constants we are also told that 2 years after being planted is 260 in height and 10 years after being planted is 510 in height and we need to find a complete equation for the model finding A and B to three significant figures. So we will start by substituting the conditions given here so that we end up with two simultaneous equations in A and B. So we've got that 2.60 squared is 2A plus B and 5.10 squared is 10a plus b we will deduct one from the other leading to 5.10 squared minus 2.60 squared is equal to 8a so we can divide by 8 to get the value of a so this leads to a being 77 over 32 which to three significant figures is 2.41. We will now substitute the value of A into the first equation here. So 2.60 squared is 2 times 77 over 32 plus B. And this leads to B being 779 over 400, which is equal to 1.95. The last thing missing is to write out the full equation for the model. So we've got that h squared is 2.41t plus 1.95. In B, we are told that the height of the tree was 7 meters exactly 20 years after being planted. And we need to evaluate the model giving reasons for our answer. So we need to assess on whether this is a good model or not. In order to do that, I will use the model to determine the height of the tree after 20 years as predicted by the model so when t is 20 we will be substituting t is 20 into the equation we get that h squared is 2.41 times 20 plus 1.95 this is 50.15 and therefore h is the square root of 50.15 which is 7.08 meters and therefore since 7.08 meters is close to 7 meters we can conclude that this model is indeed appropriate in question 6 we're being given a sketch of curve c here and we need to write down the set of values for which f dash of x is less than zero in other words we need to find the range of values of x for which this is a decreasing function well, as I draw this from left to right, I go up, so it's increasing up to 2, then it's decreasing, it's going down between 2 and 6, and then it's going up again, so I need to be between 2 and 6, and therefore my answer to part A will be all x such that x is in the reals, and it's between 2 and 6. You could include the endpoints here. You could have said 2 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 6. In B, we have that the line with equation y is k, so a horizontal line, intersects at only one point. We need to find the set of values of k, giving our answer in set notation. So if I was to draw a straight line supposedly here, we can see that we've got three distinct cuts. If I move this up and down, I can see here we've got two distinct points. And then if I go just a bit up, we have just one cut. And similarly, if I go down below the x-axis, then I only have one cut. And therefore, we want to be above this maximum point, so above 8 
or below the x-axis, so less than zero. So for part B, we conclude that for one distinct point, we want all k such that k belongs to the reals and the k is greater than eight. Or, so union, remember we're giving our answer in set notation, all k such that k belongs to the reals and k is less than zero. In C, we are asked to find the equation of C and we may leave our answer in factorized form. That's actually a hint on how we could approach this because I see that I'm looking at a cubic which has a cut at the origin and a double cut at 6. So I can make an educated guess on the form of f of x. I'm saying it should look like alpha x, x minus 6 raised to the power of 2. So this particular form is forcing the curve to pass through the origin because when x is 0, f is 0. And I'm also forcing a double cut at x is 6. I'm only missing a constant here. And I will actually use the fact that I passed through 2a to find this constant alpha. So I'm starting off with f of 2 is 8, which means that 8 is 2 alpha times 2 minus 6 squared. This leads to 8 is 32 alpha, and therefore a quarter is alpha. So f of x is a quarter x, x minus 6 squared. In 7i, we've got that given that p and q are integers such that pq is even, we need to use algebra to prove by contradiction that at least one of p or q is even. So the proposition says that pq are integers, pq is even, then at least one of them is even, and we need to set up a proof by contradiction, and we need to start by writing the negation of this. So we say that suppose not there exist integers p and q such that p, q is even and both p and q are odd. So nobody can challenge the fact that p, q is even. What we are basing our negation on is that because the proposition says that at least one of them is even, we are saying that neither of them is even and therefore both of them are odd. So we have that if p and q are odd, this means that we can write p as 2k plus 1 and q as 2m plus 1, where k and m are integers. They belong to the set of integers. So p, q is simply 2k plus 1 times 2m plus 1. I will expand this to get 4km plus 2k plus 2m plus 1, which can be written as 2 times 2km plus k plus m, close brackets, plus 1. And therefore, this means that pq is odd because it is 2 times an integer plus 1, and this is a contradiction. Now, the only thing missing here is to write a conclusion so that this completes the proof. And therefore, we say that if p, q are integers and p, q is even, then at least one of them is even. In ii, we have that x and y are integers. x is negative and x plus y all squared is less than 9x squared plus y squared. We need to show that y is uh, greater than 4x. So I will actually start by writing what I have been given to be true. So x plus y all squared is less than 9x squared plus y squared. I will expand the left-hand side x squared plus 2xy plus y squared is less than 9x squared plus y squared. And this leads to 2xy being less than 8x squared. So if I divide both sides by 2x, I will be left with y on the left-hand side and 4x on the right-hand side, but the inequality direction has to be reversed because we have that x is less than 0. So I need to explicitly state this. Since x is less than 0, then we get y is greater than 4x as required. 
In question 8, we've got the speed of a car model through this equation. Here t is the time in seconds, and we need to find the value of capital T. This is the time that it takes for the car to travel between two sets of traffic lights. We can see that at t is capital T, v is 0. So we start by stating that when uh, t is capital T, we've got that v is 0. And therefore, this means that we have 0 is 10 minus 0 0.4 capital T in brackets, ln of t plus 1. So we have that 10 minus 0 0.4 t is 0. 10 is 0 0.4 t. And therefore, we get that 25 seconds is the value of capital T. Remember, it has to be in terms of capital T. If you end up with small t is 25, you will be penalized. In B, we need to show that the maximum speed of the car occurs when t is 26 over 1 plus ln of t plus 1 minus 1. So the idea here is to differentiate, set the derivative to 0, because when we've got the maximum, then the derivative is 0, and hopefully arrive at the given answer here. So we start by writing out the original expression for v. Now dv dt, I will be using the product rule of differentiation. I differentiate the first, the derivative of 10 minus 0.4t is negative 0.4. I keep the second, so ln of t plus 1, plus I keep the first, 10 minus 0.4t, and the derivative of ln of t plus 1 is simply 1 over t plus 1, and all of this should be 0. So this leads to minus 0 0.4 ln of t plus 1 plus 10 minus 0 0.4 t over t plus 1 is equal to 0. So it makes sense to move this on the right hand side. We get that uh, 10 minus 0 0.4 t over t plus 1 is 0 0.4 ln of t plus 1. And then we should bear in mind on what we need to arrive at and also bear in mind that we have no decimals involved in what we need to show. So this is where we need to arrive at. There are no decimals involved. So the first thing to do is divide everything by 0 0.4. So 10 divided by 0 0.4 is 25. Negative 0 0.4 t divided by 0 0.4 is simply 1. So 25 minus t over t plus 1 is equal to ln of t plus 1. I divided by 0 0.4 the right hand side as well. So we can now see that the next thing to write will be 25 minus t is t plus 1 brackets ln of t plus 1 and I notice that what I need to arrive at has a 26 here so maybe I could make this 25 into a 26 by adding 1 and subtracting 1 so I could write this as 26 minus 1 minus t is t plus 1 in brackets ln of t plus 1 so what I have done here is simply I have written 25 as 26 minus 1, which means we have 26 minus brackets 1 plus t is t plus 1 in brackets ln of t plus 1. And therefore we can now proceed into saying that 26 is t plus 1 ln of t plus 1 minus brackets 1 plus t and we do notice that t plus 1 is a common factor here i will take it out to get 26 is t plus 1 in brackets and we've got ln of t plus 1 minus 1 and therefore we have that 26 over ln of t plus 1 minus 1 is equal to t plus 1, which leads to 26 over ln of t plus 1, minus 1, and then minus 1 again here is t, which is exactly what we had to show 
So we just conclude this by writing as required. In C, we need to use the given iteration formula, starting with T1 is 7 to find the third iteration to 3 dps, and then by repeated iteration, the time taken for the car to reach the maximum speed. So for CI, we just plug in the initial iteration on the calculator and we repeat this two times. We get the second iteration to be 7.443 and the third iteration to three decimal places to be 7.298. If I continue doing this, I will see that the first DP will stabilize, the second DP will stabilize and so on. And I see that after a few iterations, we get that 7.33 seconds is the time to reach the maximum speed. We have to include the units without the seconds there. You will be penalized. In question 9, we've got this parallelogram PQRS. And we need to show that it's a rhombus. Now we've got the vector PQ and the vector QR. So... We know for a fact that this being a parallelogram means that the opposite sides are of the same length. So these are the same and these two are the same. And if I find the length of PQ and the length of QR and I show that these are also the same, then I will be able to conclude that all the lengths are of the same size and therefore we have a rhombus. So we start off by finding the magnitude of the vector PQ. So this will be 2 squared plus 3 squared plus negative 4 squared, all square rooted. This gives an answer of root 29. And for QR, we will do the same. It's going to be 5 squared plus negative 2 squared square root. This is also root 29. We conclude that since PQ is equal to QR, PQRS is a rhombus as required. In B, we need to find the exact area of the rhombus PQRS. So we will find the length of the diagonals QS and PR. And if the two diagonals are D1 and D2, then the area will be D1 times D2 over 2. So in order to do that, I will find the vector PR and the vector qs and then find their magnitudes so to find the vector pr i can say this is pq plus qr we already have that pq is the vector 2 3 negative 4 and the vector qr is 5 0 negative 2 this gives an answer of 7 3 negative 6 and therefore the magnitude of PR will be 7 squared plus 3 squared plus negative 6 squared square root. And this is equal to root of 94. Now for QS, it's going to be QR plus RS. So in other words, I'm saying that to go from Q to S, I will go from Q to R and then from R to S. Now going from R to S is the same as going from Q to P. So I can write this as QR plus QP. And therefore this can be written as 5, 0, negative 2 plus QP, which is negative 2, negative 3, 4. Remember that if PQ is 2, 3, negative 4, then its reverse QP will have negative, negative, and here a positive. And this leads to the vector 3, negative 3, 2. So the magnitude of QS is 3 squared plus negative 3 squared plus 2 squared square root which gives an answer of root 22. So what we have found is that QS is root 22, PR is root 94, the diagonals meet at right angles, so this here is a right angle, so the area will be a half times diagonal 1 
times diagonal 2 which gives an answer of root of 517 we were asked to give an exact area so our final answer will be root 517 in question 10 we've got the number of b's in thousands n subscript b in terms of t the number of years from the start of the study we need to find the initial number of b's so the number of b's at the start of the study so we will simply be setting t to be zero so when uh, small t is zero we get that n b is equal to 45 plus 220 e to the zero this is simply 265,000. Remember, we need to include the 1,000, otherwise we will not be scoring the mark. In B, we need to show that exactly 10 years after the start of the study, we've got the number of Bs increasing at a rate of approximately 18,000 per year. So I need to find the derivative evaluated when T is 0. So dn, B, dt. The derivative will simply be 220 times 0 0.05 e to the 0 0.05 t. So I will substitute t is 10 to evaluate the derivative 10 years after the start of the study. So this will be 220 times 0 0.05 e to the 0 0.05 times 10. Plug everything on the calculator is 18.136 and hence we conclude that the rate of increase is about 18,000 per year as required. In part C we've got another equation here, it's the number of wasps in subscript W given here and we are told that when T is capital T then we've got an equal number of b's and wasps and we need to find the value of capital t to two decimal places so in other words we need to equate the two expressions so 45 plus 220 e to the 0 0.05 capital t is equal to 10 plus 800 e to the minus 0 0.05 capital t I will be collecting everything on the left hand side so 220e to the 0 0.05 capital T plus 35 minus 800e to the minus 0 0.05 capital T is 0. I can write this as 220e to the 0 0.05t plus 35 minus 800 over e to the 0 0.05 capital T is 0 and I will now let W be e to the 0 0.05 capital T because what we are actually looking at here is a disguised quadratic so this leads to 220 W plus 35 minus 800 over W is equal to 0 I will multiply throughout by w to get 220w squared plus 35w minus 800 is 0. And I will be using the quadratic formula to recover the two values for w. So we've got w is minus 35 plus minus 35 squared minus 4 times 220 times minus 800 all square rooted and all over 2 times the 220 we get that w is 1.8290 dot 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 or that w is minus 1.988 dot 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 now remember w is e to the 0 0.05 capital t so e to the 0 0.05 capital T is 1.8290 dot 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 so 0 0.05 capital T is a len of 1.8290 and if I divide by 0 0.05 I will be getting a value for capital T it turns out to be 12.08 now on the right hand side, if we 
say that e to the 0 0.05 capital T is minus 1.988 dot dot dot, we immediately see that this is not giving any solution because e to any number should be giving a positive result. So we simply say here that we have to reject this. It's not valid. And therefore, the value for capital T that we were trying to find is 12.08. In 11, we've got two curves, C1 and C2. They are given here algebraically, and we need to verify that the curves intersect at x is a half. So I simply need to substitute x is a half in both of them. So when x is a half, for the first one, y is 2 times a half cubed plus 10, which gives an answer of 41 over 4. And for the second one, when x is a half, y is 42 times a half minus 15 times a half squared minus 7 which also gives an answer of 41 over 4 and therefore we conclude that the two curves intersect that x is a half as required in b we are told that the curves intersect again at point p and we need to use algebra to find the exact x coordinate of point p so we have already found one point of intersection at x is a half we need to find the other point of intersection its x coordinate that's point p so to find the point of intersection we start by equating the two uh, curves so we've got 2 x cubed plus 10 is equal to 42 x minus 15 x squared minus 7 I will be collecting everything on the left hand side to give me 2x cubed plus 15x squared minus 42x plus 17 is 0. We already know that x is a half is a solution, so it's a root, which means that x minus a half must be a factor of the left hand side. So I will proceed with the long division. I've got 2x cubed plus 15x squared minus 42x plus 17 divided by x minus a half. So x will be multiplied by 2x squared to give me 2x cubed. So 2x squared goes here. I've got 2x cubed minus x squared and I deduct. This leads to 16x squared minus 42x plus 17. Now, x will be multiplied by 16x to give me 16x squared. So, plus 16x. So, I've got 16x squared minus 8x. And then I deduct once more. I get minus 34x plus 17. So, I need a minus 34 here, which leads to minus 34x plus 70 so it divides exactly as expected so we are now trying to solve x minus a half times 2x squared plus 16x minus 34 is equal to 0 now obviously this factor here is giving me the solution of x is a half which is not the value of the x coordinate of p we need to solve this quadratic here so we have 2x squared plus 16x minus 34 is equal to 0. I'll be using the quadratic formula. So x is minus b plus minus b squared minus 4ac square root and all of it over 2a. So 2 times 2. And this is giving solutions of x is minus 4 plus minus root of 33. Now, going back briefly to the sketch, we see that the points of intersection are in the first quadrant, which means that the x coordinate of point P should be positive. And therefore, we simply say that since x is greater than 0, we go for x is minus 4 plus the root of 33, concluding that at P, we have that X is negative 4 plus the root of 33.
In question 12, we need to show that the integral of x cubed ln x dx from 1 up to e squared is a e to the 8 plus b for a and b being rational constants to be found. This is obviously an integration which is calling for integration by parts. I will let my u be ln x and my dv dx to be x cubed. This means that du dx is 1 over x and v I integrate x cubed to get x to the power of 4 over 4. So the integral from 1 up to e squared of x cubed ln x dx will be uv, so ln x times x to the power of 4 over 4 from 1 up to e squared minus v du dx, so 1 over x times x to the power of 4 over 4 dx from 1 up to e squared. So I will start by substituting the limits here. It's going to be ln of e squared times e squared to the power of 4 over 4 minus ln of 1 times 1 to the power of 4 over 4 minus the integral from 1 up to e squared of x cubed over 4 dx. Now ln of e squared is simply 2. So it's going to be 2 e to the 8 over 4. Now ln of 1 is 0. And here the integral will be x to the power of 4 over 4 times 4 from 1 up to e squared. So at the moment we've got e to the power of 8 over 2 minus e squared raised to the power of 4 over 16 minus 1 to the power of 4 over 16. So this is e to the 8 over 2 minus e to the 8 over 16 plus 1 over 16. So this leads to 7 e to the power of 8 over 16 plus 1 over 16. In question 13, the first part, we need to prove the formula for the sum of an arithmetic series having first term a and common difference in d. So we start with uh, stating that the sum of the first n terms Sn is u1 plus u2 plus u3 plus dot 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 plus un. So the first term is a, the second term is a plus d, the third term is a plus 2d, and we'll continue like that up to the nth term, which is a plus n minus 1d. What I can do now is write the terms in reverse order. So the sum of the first n terms is the last term, a plus n minus 1d. Then the term before that, which is a plus n minus 2d, plus dot, 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 up to the very first term, which is a. And then I can add them up. So we have sn plus sn, which is 2sn. And we pair them up like this. And we notice that each pair is giving me exactly 2a plus n minus 1d. And we have n such uh, pairs. And therefore, 2sn is n times 2a plus n minus 1d, which leads to sn is n over 2, 2a plus n minus 1d as required. In II, we've got James who is saving money. He starts with 10 pounds, then next week is 920, then 840. So he starts with 10 and he keeps dropping by 80 pence. So the common difference is minus 0 0.80. And after n weeks, he saves exactly 64 pounds. We need to show that n squared minus 26 n plus 160 is 0. So we start by stating that the first term is 10. The common difference is minus 0 0.80. And we have that the sum of the first n terms is 64. 
So we use a formula n over 2, 2a plus n minus 1 times d, which is minus 0 0.80, is equal to 64. So we have that n over 2 brackets 20 minus 0 0.8 n plus 0 0.8 is 64. This leads to n over 2 brackets 20.8 minus 0 0.8 n is 64. So we get 10.4 n minus 0 0.4 n squared is 64. I will divide everything by 0 0.4 to get rid of the decimals. So dividing throughout by 0 0.4 leads to 26n minus n squared is equal to 160. And therefore 0 is n squared minus 26n plus 160 as required. In B, we need to solve the given quadratic, so this factorizes into n minus 16, n minus 10. So we get that n is 16, or n is equal to 10. And then in C, we need to state the number of weeks James takes to save enough money to buy the printer, giving a brief reason for our answer. Now we have already found that there are two solutions to this quadratic, n is 10 and the n is 16. Obviously we're gonna go for the lowest of the two because that's the earliest that the full amount is saved. In 14, starting with two sine x minus 60 is cos x minus 30, we need to end up with tan x being three root three. So I will be using the addition formula here. We've got two sine of x minus 60 is equal to cos of x minus 30. So on the left hand side we've got 2 sine x cos 60 minus 2 cos x sine 60 is equal to cos x cos 30 plus sine x sine 30. Now I will be using my calculator to retrieve the cos of 60, the sine of 60, cos 30 and sine of 30 this leads to 2 sine x times a half minus 2 cos x times root 3 over 2 is equal to cos x root 3 over 2 plus sine x times a half. I will multiply throughout by 2 to get 2 sine x minus 2 root 3 cos x is equal to root 3 cos x plus sine x. I will collect the sines on one side, the cos on the other, so we get that sine of x is equal to root 3 cos x plus 2 root 3 cos x, and therefore sine of x is 3 root 3 cos x. I will now divide by cos x both sides, so on the left hand side we get tan x and on the right hand side we get 3 root 3 as required. In B we need to solve for theta being in degrees between 0 and 180. 2 sine 2 theta is cos of 2 theta plus 30. Our answer should be given to one decimal place. So we notice that if we have 2 sine 2 theta is equal to cos of 2 theta plus 30. This means that the x minus 60 is 2 theta and the x minus 30 is 2 theta plus 30. So if 2 theta is equal to x minus 60, this means that 2 theta plus 60 is equal to x. And similarly, we have that 2 theta plus 30 is equal to x minus 30. And therefore, we get that 2 theta plus 60 is again equal to x. So in what we arrived in part A, we are replacing x with 2 theta plus 60. This means that we're dealing with tan 2 theta plus 60 is equal to 3 root 3. So I will start by finding the principal value, which is a shift tan of 3 root 3. 
and this turns out to be 79.1066 and therefore 2 theta plus 60 is the PV 79.1066 plus 180k I will deduct 60 I get 2 theta is 19.1066 plus 180k and then dividing throughout by 2 leads to theta being 9.5533 plus 90k remember we're between 0 and 180 so if I put k to be 0 I get 9.6 degrees and if I put k to be 1 I get 99.6 degrees in question 15 we've got the figure here showing the design for a solid toy that looks like a piece of cheese we are told that the volume is 240 cubic centimeters and we need to show that the surface area is given by this expression in terms of R. So if we look at the diagram here, we will certainly be referring to the formula for the length of an arc and the area of a sector when the angle is given in terms of uh, theta in radians. So the length of the arc is r theta, the area of the sector is a half r squared theta. We have been told that the volume is 240 cubic centimeters and the volume is simply the area of the cross section times the height. Here's the cross section highlighted here. So the volume will be the area of the sector, so a half r squared theta times the height which is h we have been told that the volume is 240 cubic centimeters and that's 0.4 r squared h and therefore 240 over 0.4 r squared is h so we've just established a relationship for h in terms of r now we will try to figure out an expression for the total surface area of this um, 3D shape. So for the area we've got the top sector which is already highlighted in red and similarly we've got an identical sector at the very bottom, there it is. So these two sectors will be contributing to the area 2 times a half r squared times 0 0.8 and then we notice that there are two rectangles here, one h times r and another one identical a c f d so that's the first rectangle and that's the other rectangle they are highlighted in green so this will contribute to the area two times h r and then we've got this part here so if you think about it this part here is essentially a rectangle which has a height of h and its length is the length of the arc here so the length of the arc is r times theta, theta is 0 0.8, so 0 0.8 r is the length of the rectangle times h, so 0 0.8 r h, so this leads to s being 0 0.8 r squared plus 2.8 r h, and we will now replace h with the expression we obtained from the volume. So this is giving me s is 0.8 r squared plus 2.8 r times 240 over 0.4 r squared, which simplifies to s being 0.8 r squared plus 1680 over r as required. In B we need to use algebraic differentiation to find the value of r for which s has a stationary point. So the first thing to do is write s in index form 0.8 r squared plus 1680 r to the minus 1. So ds dr will be 0 0.8 times 2r plus 1680 times minus 1 r to the minus 2 and this is 1.6 r minus 1680 over r squared and I will set this equal to 0 this leads to 1.6 r 
is 1680 over r squared so 1.6 r cubed is 1680 which leads to r cubed being 1680 over 1 1.6 which is 1050 and therefore the value of r that leads to a stationary point is simply the third root of 1050. In C we need to prove by further differentiation, so the second derivative test that the value of r here gives a minimum surface area. So we will start by finding an expression for d2s dr squared. This is simply 1.6 plus 1680 times minus 1 and we get the power down minus 2 times r to the minus 3. So this simplifies to 1.6 plus 3360 r to the minus 3. I will be replacing r with the value we obtained in part b. So the 2 sdr square when r is the third root of 1050 is 1.6 plus 3360 times the third root of 1050 to the power of negative 3 and this gives an answer of 4.8 we need to state that this is greater than 0 and therefore we conclude that it's a minimum if we do not make the explicit comparison with 0 then we will be penalized so the value of r we obtain in part b leads to a minimum surface area in question 16, we've got here the sketch of care C defined parametrically here. We are asked to show that the area of R is given by this expression here. So the area of R is the area enclosed by the curve, the x-axis and the limits are 0 and 4. So we know that the area R is the integral from 0 to 4 of y with respect to x. However, we do not have y with respect to x, so I will integrate y dx dt dt. So this is parametric integration. We have that uh, x was uh, 8 sine square t, so dx dt is 8 times 2 sine t cos t so that's 16 sine t cos t we also need to find the corresponding t limits because 0 and 4 are limits with respect to x and therefore we can say that when x is 0 we have 8 sine square t is 0 this means that sine of t is 0 and this leads to t being 0 and when uh, x is 4 we've got 8 sine square t is equal to 4 so sine square t is 4 over 8 which is a half sine t is the square root of a half we take the positive square root because we have been given that the range of values of t goes from 0 to pi over 2 so we're looking at an acute angle so it's sine should be positive and therefore we get that t is pi over 4 this means that we have now established that the limits in terms of t are 0 and pi over 4 and therefore the integral is gonna be the integral from 0 to pi over 4 y was 2 sine 2t plus 3 sine t we know that dx dt is 16 sine t cos t dt so we are now at a position where we've got an expression for the area r in terms of an integral that is in terms of t and we need to do some more work in order to bring it to the required form so I will start by expanding this. It's the integral from 0 to pi over 4. Now 2 times 16, I'm not going to write 32. I will write it as 16 sine 2t times 2 sine t cos t 
because I see the double angle here for sine 2t plus the expansion of 3 sine t times 16 sine t cos t gives me 48 sine square t cos t dt. So this is the integral from 0 to pi over 4 of 16 sine 2t sine 2t plus 48 sine square t cos t dt. Now we have this as the integral from 0 to power 4 of 8 times 2 sine square 2t plus 48 sine square t cos t dt. So I have written 16 sine squared as 8 times 2 sine squared. The reason is that we've got a double angle for cos 2 theta. We know that cos 2 theta is 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. So 2 sine squared theta is 1 minus cos 2 theta. And if I replace my theta with 2t, I get that 2 sine squared 2t is 1 minus cos 4t. So the integral now becomes the integral from 0 to pi over 4, 8 times 1 minus cos 4t plus 48 sine squared t cos t dt, which I can further expand. It's the integral from 0 to pi over 4 of 8 minus 8 cos 4t plus 48 sine squared t cos t dt as required. In part b we need to proceed using algebraic integration to find the exact area of r. So the integral of 8 is 8t. The integral of cos 4t is sine 4t over 4. And now for 48 sine square t cos t, we use integration via recognition or using the reverse chain rule. We know that the derivative of sine t is cos t, so we just increase the power by 1. So 48 sine cube t divided by the new power and the limits are 0 and pi over 4. I will substitute the upper limit, so it's 8 times pi over 4 minus 8 sine 4 pi over 4 over 4 plus 48 sine cubed pi over 4 over 3. That's the upper limit substituted. Now the lower limit substitute will make everything 0 here, so everything gives me a result of 0, so the overall lower limit will contribute 0. So 8 times pi over 4 is 2 pi. Sine of 4 pi over 4, sine of pi is also 0. And then 48 with 3 leaves me with a 16 here. And sine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. I will raise this to the power of 3. So we get 2 pi plus 16. This will give me root 2 over 4. And therefore, this simplifies to 2 pi plus 4 root 2 squared units.